Hey, fifth hour. I am out today. My daughter has strep throat. So we're going to try to do a video and then I want to check your understanding throughout this video with a couple questions just to see if it makes sense to you. So, um, first off, get out a piece of paper. If you haven't already press pause, uh, alongside with this video. So that way you can sort of take notes. But anyway, I wanted to let you know, okay. Uh, purpose of the day is to figure out radicals and how do we understand this sort of notation now we're used to seeing things like um, so let's do a little recall again pause so you can get some of this down recall uh, we know that 4 to the 1 half power is the same as square root of 4 to the first power otherwise known as just square root of 4 which is 2 but we're going to look at um, not just that, but uh, looking at indices that are different. So if you have the cubed root of 8 to the first power, that means, um, actually, wait a second, we never did that. We looked at 8 being, okay, 8 breaks up into 2 times 2 times 2, which is a whole. So if I want a third of that, a third of that product is 2. We're going to look at it a different way. If I were to see that 8 to the 1 third as third root of 8 and how we can still look at it at the same token of, well, wait a second, what times itself three times gets us to 8? It's like going a little backwards. So let's get a rule down. Let's say we have nth root of something times itself exactly n times. So if you have something times itself exactly whatever this index is times, then that means it's just going to spit out that number. For example, we if I look at the cubed root of 8, that's the same as, well, let's do a little factor tree, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So cubed root of 8 is the same as cubed root of 2 times 2 times 2. Notice 2 is being multiplied by itself three times. So the cubed root of 8 is just a 2. Let's say I have the fifth root of 243. Then 243 breaks up into 9 and 27 because I just hit it with a calculator. Uh, 27 breaks down into 9 and 3 and 9 breaks up into 3 and 3. This other 9 from before breaks up into 3 and 3 as well. So if I line all those up, I notice I, this is 3 times 3. 3 uh, over and over a total of 5 times so 5th root of 243 is exactly 3. What if it's not perfect? So like what if I wanted the 3rd root of 16? So let's break 16 up. So 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. We've got to realize, hey wait a second, here is a perfect cubed root. Here's a perfect cubed root. So what I could look at this as, this is a perfect 2 times the third root of 2. Because this one was too much, it stays under the radical. So the third root of 16 actually turns out to be uh, 2 times the third root of 2. Let's do the square root of 216. Now, anytime we have a square root, there's like a 2 in the index position. So 216, I know 6 goes into, and then 36 breaks up into 6 and 6. Every 6 breaks up into a 2 and a 3. And I'm going to try to order these, like group all the 2s together and then all the 3s together. So if I'm looking for perfect square roots, that means I'm looking for things that are multiplied by uh, two perfect times. So we've got a group, two times two here, and we've got a perfect group, three times three here. So what goes on the outside, I have a perfect square root of two, or sorry, I have a perfect square, which is two, and then another one that is three, but I don't have a pair for this two and this three, so they go on the inside. Whatever's left over stays on the inside. So technically my answer now just cleans it up as six times the square root of six. 
So the goal for today, can we try to figure out what the third root of 64 is? 